We have been going for like 20 minutes, and I just did the biggest OK Boomer in the history of my channel. Uh, we've been going, Starry and I have been going for, for how long now? For freaking 12 minutes. And I'm like, I didn't hit the start button on the other one. Oh, God, that was so funny. Jesus Christ, superstar. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, Hello again. Uh, I, I saw somebody, I saw, I was like reading the chat and somebody's yeah. like, I'm going to hit the dislike button until they start the stream. I'm like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> uh, 12 hour drive, traveling, that yeah. dude, boomer, <laughs> boomer. I'm, I should go home, put on some Birkenstocks yeah. and, uh, and talk about how great the sixties were and how they changed everybody, how we changed the world. Uh, and then I don't know, talk about Crosby, Stills, and Nash for like an hour. It- That's what I should do right now. For fuck's sake. Okay. Uh, and, and and we don't have a ton of time because I got to go see my dear mother today. Yeah. So starry-eyed girl, I would like, because I was just about to ask you this question anyway, how long mm-hmm. have you been a Doctor Who fan? I have been a Doctor Who fan for the past 15 years. So since um, it returned... In 2005, yeah. And did you go back, after you watched the modern show, did did you go back and watch the classic era and get caught yeah. up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Big Finish. And Big Finish. Yeah. And you probably listened to more Big Finish than I have. I've, mm. I've dabbled. Uh, I would say I've listened to like 20 of them. There's so mm. many. I have there them is. all. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's really hard to keep up with, but... Big yes. finish is fucking fantastic. So no matter what happens with Doctor Who, Nicholas Briggs uh, is is uh, a international treasure. He's an international mm-hmm. treasure yeah, for is. what he's done. Yeah. Uh, it's the history behind Big Finish is quite interesting if you guys look into it because uh, it started kind of shady and it turned into something mm-hmm. cool. Uh, mm-hmm. I know. Uh, thank you, Stephen. I am too young to be a boomer. I am a Gen Xer who <laughs> just did a lot of drugs. Okay, a lot. <laughs> Jerry Garcia would blush how much acid I have dropped in my life. Uh, (laughs) Thank you, Rosetta Allen. Okay, so the episode, you know, we've been avoiding talking about it because it was boring. And this is what you're left with when you remove all the wokeness and agenda out of Doctor Who. Shitty sci-fi. Like really, really boring, bad sci-fi episode is a three out of 10 and it's probably the best doctor who episode be, and it's the least offensive yeah uh there's only one scene really uh where graham fires a dick and balls gun and it doesn't fire and i i have that so uh, i have that screenshot of a yeah. dick and ball gun uh misfiring so yes. they had to get that in there um, and let's try not to uh, spam. That's the one no-no in my uh, in my uh, live stream chats. Uh, you can criticize me all you want. I don't care. Uh, no spamming, though. Goes bye-bye. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> yeah, it was boring. Uh, Nikola Tesla is, well, I mean, everybody loves Tesla. A lot of people know that uh, Ed- the Edison Tesla... Uh, uh, the, the the battle between those two and the injustices uh, that were you know that were done to Nikola Tesla, but also you have to realize and they do talk about it in the episode. He did a lot of shit to himself. He was a mm-hmm. bad businessman. Uh, yes. This was this 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 episode was very anti capitalist for sure. I mean, oh, yes. without yeah. a doubt, uh, they used this to. Uh, what did Jody say in the beginning of the episode? There's more rich people. Uh, it, this was in uh, 1800s New York. She said, "There's more rich people now than ever, and now there's more poor people now than ever." Um, that's a dumb statement. Uh, there were there have always been a lot of poor people. There were more rich people. There certainly were. There there hadn't been a billionaire yeah. yet. Um, uh, Gary, can I just stop you there a minute? Um, I've just realized most of this was set in New York. I thought the doctor couldn't go back to New York. You know what? You're right. Uh, or was it a certain year? I'll have to look into know. that because it might have been just yeah. that year, um, which was because that was, uh, God damn it. 
It was in the 30s. Can't remember the date. Someone will know. Yeah, because I forgot what it is now. It's it's like uh, it's only the year. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Yeah, right. that that okay. year is like time locked or something. I forgot. Okay. <clears throat> uh, David Tennant. I think I think. Listen, a lot of actors, George, uh, will say they're anti-capitalist, but I will remind all the actors, even the ones in the BBC, uh, Doctor Who personifies capitalism. Star Wars mm -hmm. personifies capitalism. Star Trek personifies capitalism these mm -hmm. things would not exist without it so mm -hmm. sorry everybody else who thinks that this kind of art would flourish in anything else other than a free market society if that pisses people off i'm sorry that's a fact that is a goddamn fact um mm -hmm. doctor who flourished and got mega big i'm sorry to say this because america uh it was it lasted a long time mm -hmm. in your country I loved it. It was great. You were the first fandom. I respect the hell out of Whovians, but it hit stratosphere when it hit here and the rest of the world. It wasn't just America. Yeah, it was it Australia. And yeah. Sorry, go on. No, it, it was lovely to see, uh, but it's sad now that it's lost it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm not. I, I don't want the doc. I don't want Doctor Who to ever cater to Americans. I don't want it to ever feature Americans, or maybe as guest stars. But I don't want Americans on the crew. I don't want Americans directing it. I don't want Americans producing it. I don't want Americans financing it. I want it to be completely British. Don't get me wrong. It's a British show that needs to stay British forever, uh, or it ceases being special. Um, yeah. But. The reason it hit the stratosphere and got so many kids in it, and, and a lot of kids got into this, uh, which you could have then, if you didn't go so ultra goddamn woke and alienate all your audience, you can still get your messages across. I think we talked about this last week. I've talked about it in previous videos. You want to get your messages across. All you need is a talented writer to show, to show it from an angle where you're not being preachy. And at a concern, it's almost an empathy. And then you get your message across. Uh, but when yeah. you when you come across as like, I'm just, I know better than you. I'm right. You're wrong. And people dip out, even people who might agree with you. So there. Yeah. Uh, we will get to that. So the episode's boring as shit. Uh, it's a, what they have is the, the Skethra. They're a scavenger race, which is kind of what this show is. It's a scavenger. The season 12 is a scavenger season where they're just repurposing greater stuff written by greater people, uh, men and women, uh, to mm -hmm. repurpose this show to try to salvage something. I asked yeah. you this well, when we weren't live. Where do you see it going? Uh, down the toilet. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I just can't see it recovering from this, not with the ratings. Um, I, I don't think this particular episode deserves low ratings but i can't see it coming back after last week i think it, it's just going to stay down and like i was saying to you before um it's up against dancing on ice on itv which is popular anyway and it's also got john barrowman as one of the judges i mean i i would tune into that you know we love john barrowman um so yeah i, I think it's just going to fade into obscurity yeah, um, but we've still we've still got big finish and the blue race coming out. So I think that will be how fandom survives. But as for Doctor on screen, I think it's going to take a few years to get you know get rid of this nasty taste. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and all their dreams and aspirations of possibly doing a movie, uh, and that has been out there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's been directors attached and that that's not going to happen. And this is why a, a lot of the classic doctors have come out for Jody publicly, but it's never been an outcry. Um, hmm. Where are the Neil Gaiman's? Where are all the old, where are like the top British writers should all be, I really want to write a female doctor and be begging to come on this show to write. Uh, and that's honestly, in my naivete, I thought that what was that's what was going to happen, but instead, yeah. the opposites happened. Uh, we the doctors, the classic doctors and companions, have been strangely silent, except for a couple. 
uh, but mm -hmm. strangely silent on this. And, you know, I, I'm going to Gallifrey one in february so we'll we'll get a lay of the land then so that, that will be interesting yeah, yeah. Ah, it will be <laughs> it'll probably be a lot like when i went to star trek las vegas i was yeah. expecting uh so much worse and nothing happened nobody came up to me nobody said a, i yeah. mean all i got was handshakes and people wanted to take pictures and stuff which was surreal mm -hmm. in itself uh mm -hmm. and i would rather just hang out and talk as a matter of fact, so I was talking to people so much, they were like, okay, I got to go now. <laughs> uh, it, it's funny that you bring Star Trek up because don't you get the same, a similar feeling with Chibnall as you do with Kurtzman, that it is just employing, first of all, writers that are cheaper, but also inexperienced writers, just to make, so he doesn't look like he doesn't know what he's doing. Because that's how I'm starting to see it. That's absolutely what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's why you don't yeah. bring those writers in. So the head honcho yeah. can look like the smartest guy. Uh, Kurtzman's not going to be involved in. Um, he's not going to be involved in in Star Trek Discovery. The showrunner yeah. I read is if this thing's timing out, folks. Sorry, I'm on I'm on a hotel connection, so there's not much yeah. I can do. Um, the Heather Caden is is pretty much running Star Trek Discovery now. So Kurt, my insider has been telling me on Star Trek for about two or three days now that Kurtzman's like on his way out. Um, I got to verify that before I would call that news. Uh, so mm -hmm. right now we will just say that's a major rumor uh, that they're actually yes. like uh, Sherry Redstone doesn't like him. He is a less moon vis guy. He's out, uh, but he's going to go and do other things. He's still going to be executive producer, but as far as being creatively mm -hmm. involved in any Star Trek done. Um, I don't think it's going to change anything though. I don't think that changes no, the damn no. thing. Uh, with this one, we're going to get, we're getting a 13th season for sure. Uh, they've already started production. So, uh, as much as I would love for it to be reset, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to put it out there. I'm, I'm not going to give anybody hope that, the, uh, I, it doesn't really matter how far these ratings fall. They're staying. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in yeah. the, in the words of Edison in this episode, uh, the British don't know how to how to do business. <laughs> well, BBC don't. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. No, I I love the Brit. Um, yeah. yeah uh, by the way, I'll be out there in in four months or three months now. Uh, so let's get I to know, a little I'm bit. Looking forward to it. Ah, yeah. it's gonna be freaking great. I cannot wait. I uh, yeah. the tickets are really cheap right now, so I'm gonna jump on that pretty soon. Let's get to the chat a little, awesome. but real quick. Uh, just general thoughts of the episode. The, it was okay as a period drama. Uh, I will, I'll get my analogy out again. This is the third time I've said it. <laughs> yeah, it felt like a, a BBC period drama that had been recorded over a cheap sci-fi film and then the sci-fi film kept bleeding through because the, the sci-fi elements just didn't tally up with what else was going on. Um, I actually thought the monsters were going to be in the electricity, you know, like in the Unquiet Dead with the gas monsters. That's where I thought it was going to go. Um, but we got the scorpions instead. That were, they, they looked okay, but they were, why did they keep falling over each other? Uh, so they were when they, when they were running actors. Uh, that's the thing is we're, we're, you're, you're trying, you cannot have both things. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. Jody can't run. She runs like a duck. I, I start going quack, 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 cause she runs like a duck and they can't shoot her running. Have you noticed that they will not shoot her running at all? That's a big problem. What were the I first spoke. words that Chris Eccleson spoke when they launched this series? <laughs> run. <laughs> But surely that would have been an important part of the audition process to make sure. If they auditioned. Uh, wow. I'm sure they auditioned a bunch of people that they had no yeah. intention on ever hiring. Chris Chibnall's like, yeah. I'm just going to get, you know, my mate in here. And uh, I can't mm -hmm. get the first one, so we'll get the second one. Yeah. Uh, I'm checking on the connection here. I don't know how good it is or not. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's again, this is... Uh, uh, I, you know, I had to, I had to do, to do this anyway. I was going to kind of call it off, but eh, why not? Uh, so let's get to Sue. Ma. So I thought it was boring. I don't, there was no 
well, uh, th there wasn't anything really PC and woke aside from the obligatory capitalism is bad. So I guess there, yeah. that's there. But it was just underlying. There wasn't any preachy over your over, like the that speech at the end of the last episode was just fucking terrible. I know, just terrible. <laughs> and, oh, cringe. There was nothing like that. No. It's just this uh, is it, what you're there was some with. nice. There were some nice scenes actually between. I mean, I'll never see her as a doctor, but to see her actually conversing with a white male and not pulling that face that she does. What was quite refreshing to see, uh, but she's still not the doctor. No, no, she did it with Edison, but she didn't do it with Tesla. Mm. Uh, and plus, Tesla was an immigrant. Oh, they also, you know, the, the more I think about, the more <laughs> messages there were. Uh, that somebody said, oh, "You're not an American." He's all, "I'm an American citizen," which I'm sure people said to them back then. I'm, I'm sure, mm. but yeah. we're ignoring all the other stuff. So mm. I said this in the portion we weren't live. Um, you set up this world where you went to the deep South as they called it and did the whole Rosa Parks thing. But now mm -hmm. you have Ryan and Yaz and the doctor running around the 1800s in New York and everything's fine. And she's running up to Edison and he's listening to her and, uh, and the way she's dressed, uh, they would just, what? And are these your servants with you? And I okay, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the world you set up. So now, yes, now we're cool. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, that's that's the way it is. Um, and just uh, uh, I look forward um, to my uh, Bulls Trek was invited. He couldn't make it for my fa for a family thing, but uh, Bulls Trek and I were the star of a Reddit thread uh, that was <laughs> how misogynists and racists are Bulls Trek and neurotic. Not like if we are. It's how much. How? <laughs> okay. Um, I haven't read the thread. I, there's no need to read the thread. I'm sure I know what it says. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I I just, you know, I don't know this for a fact. I've been called an incel. It's like I'm married. I have kids. One of my kids, I mean, um, my my family isn't, isn't all white. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, and I shouldn't have to, to state that. And uh, no. The hiring I've done, yeah, you know, it's it's fine. Uh, you know, what? free speech is free speech, and they have mm -hmm. the right to to do that. I just came across it when uh, YouTube, okay. uh, Reddit, um, Reddit. John Ellis Bush Bush for nine ninety nine says, Gary just came here for your Rose review. Uh, do you plan to go back and review any older Doctor Who episodes as a reminder of how the show used to be? Uh, John Ellis Bush Bush, I. I, I do. I've done one uh, a long, long time ago, uh, and I will do more in the future. Absolutely. Uh, maybe when the season is over, I can. Uh, but I want to give them proper reviews, not just me coming on a live stream. I will go make a video and I will break it down why yeah. I like it. Um, Andrew yeah, Brown. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be fun. Any update on the join button for Apple users? Andrew Brown for $1.99. Silence, deafening silence. And Andrew, thank you for bringing that up. That's not for everybody. Apparently some Apple users can hit the join button and some can't. So I don't know what's going on. I will try to ask them again. Uh, and I have I have a, a ticket started and I can talk to somebody and I've got nothing. Uh, Rosetta, but thanks for asking. Uh, Rosetta Allen for $2. God bless your ditzy heart, Gary, I think. <laughs> I Pretty ditzy. I am. Uh, Cryonic for 10 pounds. Since I was two, I was the biggest Doctor Who fan. David regenerating, regenerating reached Avengers Endgame level hype across the UK. Now it's a political vehicle. Public presence is at an all-time low. I miss 2005 through 2009. I do too. And yeah. it was a big deal here when he regenerated. It was a huge deal. And that's when things were starting to really get big. Uh, they got big during the Matt Smith era, but I, it wasn't the 50th anniversary. It was Doctor Who being on Netflix. Doctor Who being on yeah. Netflix made it big here. Well, it made the national news. It, um, David's regeneration was actually on the BBC News at 10. So it was, it was such a huge deal. That's it was crazy. amazing. Uh, uh, Lucien for $2 says, I'm back. 
Uh, thank you. I, and I saw you last night. I was up, well, this morning, uh, doing a live stream on the fandom menace getting attacked by a billion dollar back newspaper, which was rich for lack of a better term. I love scotch for $2. Thank you. I love scotch. I appreciate it. He has no comment. He just says $2, uh, big red bullfrog for two pounds. Jody defeats the Ferengi inquisition tonight. Uh, yes, there is an, <laughs> uh, the Ferengi. Uh, that's good. Um, Yes, there will be an inquisition tonight uh, when I get back from my dear mother's, which I have to go to very soon. Uh, Scoodle Royale for 10 pounds. Multi-doctor special idea. The 10th doctor meets the 13th doctor and is horrified that she will be his future. So he teams up with the 11th doctor to stop the 12th doctor from regenerate, regenerating into her. I like that special a lot. Yeah. Um, somebody get that. on that. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh. It was anti-capitalist garbage, says Wario641, uh, Czechoslovakia, $20. It, it was. Uh, it, you know what? I am. I guess I'm a little hardened to the ultra-wokeness in PC, so when we get a lower <laughs> level of it, I'm like, ah! <laughs> if I go, when I go and watch it again to go do a review, I will probably notice mo a lot more yeah. shit. But I was just surprised. You know what, Wario? It was this. It wasn't less woke in the political department. It wasn't as degrading to men as as the past. But the the political yeah. messages were still there. You're right. Uh, Eric K for four ninety nine. Get a burrito on me, Eric. I had one last night. I had a southern. Okay, so you guys might not know in the UK, San Diego uh, is known for its Mexican food. It's the best in the country. Okay. And you go to these little restaurants called Roberto's or Alberto's or Philly Berto's or George Berto's. They always end in Berto's really? uh, and they all serve the same shit. And it's, and it's this huge carne asada burrito. That's like this big, you get it for four bucks. It's the food of the gods. It's so good. You get hot carrots and, uh, and they're free and they're free. You get those for wow. free. Um, oh, that sounds amazing. You're yeah. me hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry. <laughs> Now I'm hungry. Techno Babbler for five dollars deleted the show from the DVR last week. For, for oh, okay, deleted the show from the DVR last week. First time in ten years I didn't record a new Doctor Who. Take that ratings. Yeah. Um, wow. Thanks to my VPN, uh, I was able to watch it on iPlayer. So uh, uh, what's the Surf Shark? Use the VPN that uh, Midnight's Edge. Uh, be careful, though, with those. Um, the reason I was offered yes. that sponsorship and I turned it down because I know VPNs have been offering sponsorships to try to take channels down and stuff. So I'm just not going to do it. But I did use the one for Midnight's Edge and it worked. It worked great. So I was able to watch the iPlayer. Uh, I believe it's hit up hit up Tom from Midnight's Edge on Twitter. He'll tell you which one they use. I'm pretty sure it was Surfshark. Uh, Felipe Abrigo for five thousand Chilean dollars. Hi, Gary. Very sad about you thinking about your people supporting on the expanse. Damn, Bezos. Damn those people. They ruin everything. Anyway, relax, man. Have a cigar. You're gonna go far. You're gonna fly high. You're never gonna die. You're gonna make it if you try. They're gonna love you. Uh, I finished that out. I love Pink Floyd. Felipe. <laughs> yes, I am rethinking my support for the expanse because of that article last night. Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post. The Washington Post uh, basically spread a false narrative about the fandom menace, uh, lumping us all as right, uh, calling us all right wing misogynists. The same shit that we've heard for two years. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Are you right wing, uh, starry eyed girl? Are you right wing misogynist? <laughs> no, not either. Uh, you don't I, I, I'm actually more on the left. Yeah. Then, but yeah, but they don't like that because I don't fit into the little boxes. Yeah, uh, I will openly say the right are welcome here. You're not monsters uh, mm -hmm. like they say you are. Uh, that means my mom's a monster and my sister's a monster. And it's like they're. I, not I have a lot of right wing friends. Yeah, I'm friends with a lot of different people. Does it does it bother me? No, uh, because we we have so much more in common, and it's mm -hmm. it's rag shit rags like the Washington Post that want to keep us divided. And mm -hmm. keep their narrative going. So uh, they did mention kind of my good friend Stephen Walton's book. So good for them. Uh, and Jeff from Woke Cost Bullshitters comic book in a roundabout way. They didn't mention him by name. But it was a hit piece. It was garbage. I'll probably do a video on it 
when I get back. But the live stream is on Nerdronic Live if you want to check it out. Uh, nice to see the return of John Candy's character from Spaceballs on Doctor Who, even if they made the character female. Cracklin for four ninety nine. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, problem being for a dollar. And welcome, Cracklin. Good to see you. Thank you for the four ninety nine. Tesla was a gr uh, germaphobe, heroic being near Whitaker. Uh, yeah, uh, I was he. I, I didn't know he was a germaphobe, but I can believe it. Uh, I believe Tesla was on the spectrum for sure. I think Osberger or something like that. He was never in a relationship. Uh, he always focused on his work. He was terrible with business. Uh, I think there, you know, some obsessive compulsive was definitely in play. Uh, yeah, it's not that it's bad, you know, my kid's on the spectrum. Uh, first and last for Australian $10. Gary, did you receive uh, from Chris Persia, the Doctor Who Rotten Tomatoes score? I did a screen capture when it was on. Z it hit No, I didn't. Did he did Chris, did you DM me? I know you're in here. Chris, did you DM me that on Twitter? I'll check it out. I, unfortunately, wow. I cannot make videos from here. I got to wait till I get home. So I could do live streams, but I can't do videos. Uh, I have standards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Obi Wan, what's up, Obi Wan? Two seven eight eight three five dollars. Gary, I love conversation with you. I will never try to peace out uh, on you. Ha <laughs> ha! I sent you uh, the requested email last night too. Thank you. I will be in LA tomorrow. I'll be in LA tomorrow. Was it Alan for two dollars? You are amazing. I love every time you're online. You're amazing. You're breathtaking, Rosetta. The Kelvington says spoiler uh for a dollar nine oh yeah spoilers i watched the british broadcast do, do you care yeah. um tesla gets screwed over by edison Kelvington, there's spoilers. nothing to spoil though there's nothing to spoil there's nothing really happened yeah um i i mean like i don't even want to talk about the episode the, okay spoiler <laughs> alert i'm going to show you this hang on let me let me get uh let me get grand's cock and ball gun we'll get the cock and ball gun going uh, I know I did a screenshot of it. No, we're just going to have to open it up with this. Okay. Give me just a moment. I can't run the actual video because they would get very upset about that. Yes. But um, if you can see this. Da, 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 cock and ball gun. That is a cock and ball gun. So you can see the uh, here. I'll, I'll I'll give you a little PowerPoint presentation here. Uh, where is the VLC? Yeah, and of course they had to give it to Graham to hold. You have two balls. You have a penis, and I mean it is a straight up penis. Now you're looking at a at a shot on it, and then it it uh, he fires and it and it misfires like that. See, so you can see the 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 penis part of it right there. Uh, two balls, penis. And it misfires. Yeah, we didn't miss that shite at all. No. So uh, F you. Uh, we'll keep that up there. Let's everybody look at two misfiring cock and ball gun. I don't think uh, Tesla invented that. Uh, maybe that was his death ray. Uh, yeah. The only thing I could say is that represents the show. It's got penis envy and it's still shooting blanks. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Okay. Um. Cracklin just upgraded his membership to Gandalf. Uh, Gandalf level will have a Hangout live stream next Saturday, 12 p.m. Uh, we'll be on Hangouts. You can come and talk to me. We can chat for as long as you like, and then we're going to put it on Nerdronic Live. So there you go. Uh, Eric K. Gary, it is Garf half Gary half dog. She is her own best friend. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, Eric, you're funny. Uh, San Jose, say hello to the night. Uh, woke media knows nothing about right-wing people or the fandom menace. They just stereotype and attack what they don't understand. Jeffrey, you are correct. Yeah. Uh, she she was, you know what, the whole article, she talked about this research she did, Starry, and then she gets everything wrong. Right. So, yeah, so there Amazing. we go. Uh, 200 Watt Studio watched Inferno yesterday, my favorite third Doctor episode. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, that mm, is that my favorite. It's not my. It's it's top five. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we're gonna we're and Skell seventeen oh one Australian ten dollars. The Phantom Menace has become so big and influential that mainstream media see it as a credible threat to their agenda and will do everything 
uh, to discredit it, they are lower than whale crap. Exactly. And yes. Skell, they actually cited a BuzzFeed article as like credible. <laughs> so uh, first day, first and last Australian $10 TARDIS zone official YouTube channel should also have it. I don't think anybody else took a screen capture. I may have been the first. Uh, of what of the uh, of the cock and balls? Uh, yeah, I, I did. A, I was going to post this on Twitter, and I decided against it because I don't know. Maybe I could get in trouble. But I, this is video. Uh, let me see if I missed any more. We do have to. Uh, how much longer do we have to wait for Starry Eye Girl's own videos? The public wants to know. What is that? Is that Chris Persia? It is. It is. Oh, he's a monkey. <laughs> a little bit longer, Chris. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Um, Still practicing. I, yeah, you know what? You, th that's that's part of the reason she's here, folks. She mm. wants to start a channel. I don't want to speak for you. Uh, well, speak for yourself, God. What am I doing? I'm such a freaking male. God damn it! Stop mansplaining to me. I'm totally mansplaining. <laughs> Look at me, misogynist. Totally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you want to start your own channel, right? Then you want to mm. see if you like it. So yes, what we do is we do live streams, and that's how we practice. Uh, for all those people who say that we don't reach out to smaller channels, uh, no, we just don't reach out to yours. And the reason we don't reach out to yours is because we don't trust you. Uh, that's a message for a specific person, by the way, folks. Uh, a specific channel who's out there running false, uh, a, a major false narrative. Uh, I'll reach out to anybody. I'll have anybody on the show uh, unless I don't trust you and I see you as duplicitous. Uh, and that channel I do. Uh, are you going to both days at Wales Comic Con, says Talons of Wayne Chang? Yes, for two pounds. Yes, I am going to both days. Uh, all right. So if I missed any Super Chats, I'm sorry. I will make – I'm doing a Super Chat square up on Tuesday for Friday Night Tights. I do have to run. I have to do see my mom and then get back in yeah, time for the uh, Inquisition. So do, is there anything you'd like to plug, Starry Eyed Girl? Uh, yeah, I've just done another podcast with Dan from the Space Boat. That's uh, Tight 40. Doctor, so check it out if you can. That's about um, Spyfall Part Two. Awesome, awesome. That is cool. And uh, go to Nerdrotic Live and subscribe there. That's where this live stream mm -hmm. will be once this is done. Everybody, have a great day. Uh, and well, you know, I can't say it's almost over. We only have six episodes left, six and then episodes left. there'll be another eighteen month break or sixteen month break, and that'll be that. Next week, it's the Jadoon. Yay! It's the Jadoon, and it's a two-parter. Oh. Oh, uh, first and last. Yeah. No, Gary, I may have been the first to screen capture Doctor Who at zero. Oh, at zero. Okay, I got you. Oh, cool. Good. Good deal. Good for you. Well awesome. done. Is it still at zero? That's brilliant. As long as you got a screen capture, that's great. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we need to look at that, yeah. We will report on that soon. Everybody, yeah. take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.